Hello everyone. This is Dr. Jennifer Teal. Welcome back to my channel. Today we will cover ICD-10 PCS coding from the obstetrics section. One caveat, however, often with obstetrics coding, you will have additional procedures performed that are coded from other sections of ICD-10 PCS. So make sure that you stay aware and be on the lookout for that. An important point with obstetrics coding, you must pay attention to whether the procedure was performed on the pregnant female or on the products of conception. Procedures performed on the products of conception are classified to the obstetrics section. However, procedures that are performed on the pregnant female on other body parts other than the products of conception are coded to the appropriate root operation in the medical and surgical section or any other section that's applicable. Products of conception is the term used for all physical components of a pregnancy, including the fetus, amniotic fluid, amniotic sac, umbilical cord, and placenta. What I'm showing here on this slide, if you have your ICD-10 PCS code book handy, if you go to the very beginning of the section, you will find this little um, index, if you will, kind of like a table of contents to what is in the obstetrics section. And this is a way to give you a good overview of what exists for this section. Because the obstetrics section is a smaller section, this does provide you some very helpful information. It just gives you a layout of what are the applicable root operations for this section, what are the applicable body parts, the approaches, devices, and qualifiers. In the obstetrics section, as you can see here on this slide, there are 12 root operations total. Now, 10 of the root operations are um, also found in the medical and surgical section. So you may already be familiar with those. The two root operations that are unique to the obstetric section, I have highlighted here on the slide, and that's abortion and delivery. Abortion is defined as artificially terminating a pregnancy. Delivery is defined as assisting the passage of the products of conception from the genital tract. So the delivery root operation applies only to manually assisted vaginal deliveries. The only body parts that are applicable in the obstetric section are either products of conception, products of conception retained, or products of conception ectopic. And then over here on the very far right column of this table, you'll notice that there are many different unique qualifiers within this section. And we're gonna talk about the sorts of things that the qualifiers um, represent here in just a moment. So I talked about the root operation delivery and that just being the manually assisted vaginal delivery. Cesarean deliveries are coded in the obstetric section, but to the root operation of extraction rather than delivery. The root operation extraction is also used for vaginal deliveries that require assistance with forceps, vacuum or internal version. So extraction is not just restricted to the cesarean deliveries. Occasionally when you have a C-section or a cesarean delivery, vacuum assistance is also used with the cesarean delivery. Now in that case, the use of the vacuum is not coded separately. You will only code for the cesarean delivery. And then the qualifier values when you're doing um, cesareans is it represents whether or not it is a high, a low, or an extra peritoneal C-section. 
That's your qualifier values. Now this slide is a little bit busy here, but um, remember that big old long list of all the qualifiers that we had on the table that's at the beginning of the obstetric section. So if you're looking in your ICD-10 PCS book and you have that table handy, so remember it's this one here on this slide, and you look at that qualifier column and there's a big old long list. So we're gonna talk through those qualifiers. Some of the qualifiers are gonna represent the type of an assisted delivery. So whether they used low forceps, mid forceps, high forceps, a vacuum or an internal version. So that would be an assisted delivery, which is gonna be an extraction. With your cesareans, it's going to be either high, low, or extra peritoneal, and I mentioned that a moment ago. Also, for drainage type procedures, the qualifier is going to identify the type of fluid that's removed. So is it fetal blood? Is it fetal cerebral spinal fluid, fetal fluid other, amniotic fluid? And then for amniotic fluid, whether it's therapeutic or diagnostic, and then other types of fluid. For your abortion procedure, the qualifier represents the method used to terminate a pregnancy, whether that's vacuum, abortifacient, or laminaria. And then uh, for repair procedures, the body system repair during a fetal repair procedure. So a lot of different qualifiers in this section. Now let's talk a little bit about the guidelines. The obstetric section guideline is actually very short, so not a whole lot there that you need to go over, but we're just gonna quickly preview them. The first guideline pertains to the products of conception, guideline C1, and it states that procedures performed on the products of conception are coded to obstetrics. So just like I mentioned at the beginning of the presentation. And then procedures performed on the pregnant female other than the products of conception are coded to the appropriate root operation in the medical and surgical section. So it gives us two examples, and these examples are also in the guidelines. Amniocentesis, that is coded to the obstetric section because that's the amniotic fluid, which is part of the products of conception. However, if we had a repair of a urethral laceration, that repair is not a repair to the products of conception. That is a repair on a body part for the pregnant female other than the products of conception. So that repair would be coded in the medical and surgical section. The next guideline is procedures following delivery or abortion. So guideline C2, procedures performed following a delivery or abortion for curatage of the endometrium or evacuation of retained products of conception are all coded in the obstetrics section to the root operation extraction and the body part products of conce conception retained. So that is if it's performed following a delivery or an abortion. Now, diagnostic or therapeutic dilation and curatage that's performed during times other than the postpartum or post-abortion period, those are coded in the medical and surgical section because then it would be performed on the, um, the female patient, not on the products of conception. So they would be coded to the medical and surgical section, to the root operation extraction, and the body part endometrium. So depending on when and what it is that they're extracting. So get out your ICD-10 PCS books if you don't already have them out in handy. So we're gonna run through a few coding scenarios just to kind of get you started. And again, help you pick out the little nuggets that you need to pick out from the procedure notes to help you identify what it is that you're actually coding. Where do you start? and how you figure out each one of the little components of the procedure code. 
So let's take a closer look at a procedure note. In our first case scenario, we have a patient that was admitted at 40 weeks gestation in active labor, which progressed without incident. A single live born infant was delivered spontaneously with manual assistance. A second degree perineal tear was repaired with layered sutures. And in this case, we do have a guideline alert on the screen there, and I'm going to let you take a look at that. That applies to one of um, our procedures. So some of the things I've highlighted for you, we have to figure out what all is going on here. We know that we have the delivery, and the delivery in this case, it says that it is a spontaneous delivery. So that is one of the cases where our delivery route operation applies. Manual assistance is not coded separately. So we also have a tear. So that perineal tear that was repaired is going to be coded as well. And what I need to alert you to here is that it says it's a second degree tear. And you may need to look that up to figure out what that entails and what it's all about. But it is a second degree tear, which is a tear that goes all the way down to the muscle. And so we're talking about the muscle of the perineum. And since the repair was um, performed on the pregnant female, not on the products of conception, that's gonna be coded from the medical and surgical section. So we have two codes here that we're looking for. Pause the video if you need to, get your books out, look these up and see if you can come up with the correct two procedure codes. So we're gonna pause and then resume. So just to talk a little bit about this guideline, this applies to that repair and it informs us that if, op if root operations such as excision, extraction, repair, or inspection are performed on overlapping layers of the musculoskeletal system, the body part specifying the deepest layer is coded. And that's important for this second degree tear because we know that they're going through the skin down to the muscle. So the deepest layer is going to be the muscle. All right, make sure you have your code before I go ahead and look at the PCS table. So what we have here, manually assisted vaginal deliveries are coded to delivery, products of conception, and the only choices we have here, there's one choice in every one of these columns. So we have the body part being the products of conception, the approach being external, the device, no device, and the qualifier, no qualifier. So this is a very simple, straightforward delivery. And anytime you have these, you're going to probably, if you work labor and delivery, you probably get to know this code um, probably by memory if you do them often enough. Our seven characters end up being 10E0XZZ. So that part is pretty straightforward. But we also have the repair to code. So let's take a look at that. Pause it if you need to, if you're still looking that code up. Rewind and look at the case scenario if you have to. And then we're gonna go ahead and look at the table. So repair of the perineal tear is coded to the repair root operation. So you're gonna look up repair and then it's gonna be medical and surgical section since the repair was performed again on the pregnant female, not on the products of conception. So our body part, we're gonna go repair and then we're gonna look up perineum muscle because we code to the deepest layer reach. That was what that guideline was all about, going all the way to the deepest layer. So to get to this table from the index, look up repair, that's gonna be your main term, and then muscle is gonna be your subterm, and then perineum. And that's gonna give you zero K Q M, and then you come to this table to finish building your code. Now you have to be careful with some of these. If you look up repair perineum instead, so if you go into the index and use repair as your main term and then 
perineum as your next subterm, that's going to lead you to zero WQ table. And that puts you in a whole different body system. So you can see here by our first three character values up in this top left corner, we're in the muscles body system. But if you just did repair perineum, that would put you in the anatomical regions body system instead of the muscles. So we've got another coding guideline, another guideline alert for you here. Take a look at guideline B2.1A, which addresses the anatomical regions. So the anatomical regions body system are only used when the procedure is performed on a region rather than a specific body part. And in our case, we have a specific body part. We know that it is the, the perineum muscle. So we use that body part rather than the general anatomical region. So here's the guideline I was referring to, B2.1A. The procedure codes in anatomical regions general, anatomical regions upper extremities, and anatomical regions lower extremities can be used when the procedure is performed on an anatomical region rather than a specific body part or on the rare occasion when no information is available to support assignment of a code to a specific body part. So that is our guideline alert. And just to back up again, I'm not sure if I gave you the full code there. So we are in the medical and surgical section, the muscles body system and repair, restoring to the extent possible a body part to its normal anatomical structure and function. So they're repairing the tear. We have zero K Q M as our body part for the perineum muscle, open approach, no device, no qualifier. All right, so let's take a look at our next case. For this one, we have the patient pushed through four contractions and the baby's head was delivered. Shoulder dystocia was encountered. Gentle downward traction was applied from the patient's left side on the baby's right shoulder. Reuben and wood screw maneuvers were utilized and the shoulders delivered. So take a moment to review that procedure note, have your PCS code book out and see if you can figure out how to attack this one. There are a couple of key indicators here. We know that um, the baby was delivered, traction was applied. Um, first, there was a partial delivery, and then they had to get those shoulders to break free in order to deliver the rest of the baby. So that's where the general, um, the gentle downward traction was applied. So what kind of a obstetrics code would we be using here? Pause, figure it out, and then join us back. So for this one, even though we had a different technique that was used for the delivery compared to the spontaneous delivery on our first case, the code actually ends up being the same. Pay attention to the full description of the definition of the root operation delivery, assisting the passage of the products of conception. So even though they applied pressure that's still assisting the passage of the products of conception, okay? So manually assisted delivery is what they're doing here and it results in the same code, one zero E zero X Z Z. So in this case, they manually rotated the baby's shoulder to assist in the passage of the products of conception. So one thing to note is that if they had actually performed an external version before the baby was in the genital canal, then it would be a reposition because they had to reposition the baby in order for them to be able to deliver it. In this case, 
the head had already crowned, they had already partially delivered. So it's still just a delivery. They just assisted with the passage. So hopefully that makes sense. Are we ready to move on to our next case? Our next one is a 39 year old female, Gravita 2, Para 1, was admitted in active labor at 39 weeks gestation. She was dilated to five centimeters, approximately six hours following the admission. Pitocin augmentation was started and she progressed to complete dilation. Low forceps were used due to arrested active phase of labor. There was no episiotomy, but there was a second degree perineal laceration that was repaired with 3O Dexon. A male infant was delivered weighing 2,835 grams with an APGAR score of nine and nine. The patient had indicated before delivery that she desired a sterilization procedure. Following delivery, a laparoscopic bilateral tubal ligation was accomplished. So there's a lot going on with this case. And you can see this is how your procedure notes are actually going to read. There's a lot to wade through here. And some of it is pertinent to your code. Some of it is not. It's all clinically relevant. It's all important to the overall um, documentation of the procedure. It's just that we don't need all of these details to do our coding. So we have to be able to pick out the little nuggets pick out the little bits and pieces that we're going to need in order to code our procedure. So in this case, can you pick out the three root operations? So there are three root operations. Pause if you need to pause, read through it and see if you can figure out what's going on. Okay, so hopefully you figured it out. We have the delivery of the baby. We have the repair of the perineal laceration, and then we have that bilateral tubal ligation. So with the delivery, there's a couple key things going on here. We have the Pitocin augmentation, and we have notation of the low forceps. So two little key pieces of information there that you might be um, ca catching your eye there. With the tear, we have again a second degree perineal laceration that was repaired. And then for the tubal ligation, it tells us that it was a laparoscopic bilateral tubal ligation. So these are all key bits and pieces of information that we need to build the code. So first let's look at the um, delivery of the baby. And I use that term delivery, not to speak in terms of root operations, but they're delivering a baby. So you have to figure out if the delivery root operation applies or doesn't apply. So let's go ahead and look at the tables. Remember, pause if you need to, get your books out, write on scratch paper, see if you can come up with the correct root operation and your code, and then we're gonna look at the table. So here we are in this case, we are in um, extraction as our root operation. And why is this an extraction? Because they used the forceps to pull the baby out. So this wasn't just a spontaneous delivery or manually assisted delivery. They used those forceps. And so that is what makes it an extraction, pulling or stripping out or off all or a portion of a body part by the use of force and the body part being the products of conception. Now notice here, we actually have two rows to work from, but remember the saying, stay in your lane. You must always select all of your characters from the same row in the table when you build your code. So with this table, the approach is where the fork in the road is. So that's the second column, character five, the approach. If you have an open approach, you're gonna code from the top row. 
if your approach is via natural or artificial opening, then you code from the bottom row. That's your decision point. That's your fork in the road. And so in our case, it was just a, a forceps assisted vaginal delivery. So this is going to be via natural or artificial opening. And you might be wondering about the Pitocin. Remember there was mention of Pitocin. So let's take a look. They said Pitocin augmentation was started. Okay, so Pitocin can be used to either induce labor or augment active labor by increasing the strength and the frequency of the contractions. When Pitocin is administered to augment active labor, which is our case here, then it's not coded separately. If Pitocin is given intravenously to induce labor, then you would code it separately. And in that case, it ends up being coded as an in introduction of a hormone into a peripheral vein, percutaneous approach. That's the section that's going to start with a three. So a whole different section, one we haven't covered yet, but it ends up being 3E033VJ. And that, again, is if they use it to induce labor versus augment. So the terminology was clear in our case where it said to augment. Now we have our repair. And this one was mentioned earlier, a second degree perineal laceration repair. And so it involves the skin, the vaginal wall, and the muscle of the perineum. And um, it requires suturing of the perineum layer by layer. So again, remember guideline B3.5 pertaining to the overlapping body layers. Um, and that supports assigning the code to the repair of the perineum muscle. So this is gonna end up being the same table and the same code as we used before. So <clears throat> terminology in the chart, depending on provider to provider, it might vary a little bit. In our case, they said that it was a second degree perineal laceration, and then they said perineum and vaginal wall that was repaired. It still ends up being the same code for us. 0KQM0ZZ. So we're in the medical and surgical section again, because again, the repair is on the pregnant female, not the products of conception. We're in the muscles body system and repair is our root operation. We have the perineum muscle is what is being repaired. It's open approach, no device, no qualifier. So same table, same code as before. And we have one final piece. So let's back up again and look at our case. That last piece following delivery, a laparoscopic bilateral tubal ligation was accomplished. Okay, so that's our third procedure. So you might have to think about how is a laparoscopic tubal ligation accomplished? How do they get there? What do they do once they're there? And what all it involves? And so if you're not familiar with that kind of a procedure, then go ahead and do the research and look it up until you understand exactly what it entails, because that's going to help you pick out your root operation and your operative approach. So pause and look it up if you need to, and then rejoin us. And we're gonna go ahead and look at the table. So for the sterilization procedure, so that's the laparoscopic tubal ligation, occlusion is the definitive procedure performed in which each of the fallopian tubes is ligated. Our case indicated a laparoscopic bilateral tubal ligation. And this can be accomplished by cutting and tying electric cautery or clamps. The purpose is to completely close off the fallopian tubes, which is how we arrive at occlusion. Remember, you have to apply the definition and think about what is the objective of the procedure? What is the intent? What are they trying to accomplish? So completely closing an orifice 
or the lumen of a tubular body part. That's occlusion. Now, in the real world, the specific details of that occlusion would also be included. It just wasn't in our little snippet of our case scenario. Another guideline alert for you here, I'm going to mention guideline B4.3. So if you have your book handy or guidelines handy, take a look at that. Um, whenever there is a bilateral body part option, you're going to use that rather than coding the left and the right separately when the same procedure is performed on both sides or what we call contralaterally. Okay, so reference guideline B4.3. Our scenario stated a laparoscopic bilateral tubal ligation was performed. So we know it's going to be one of the endoscopic approaches because that laparoscopic, we're using a scope. So we know it's going to be one of the root operate, I mean, one of the operative approaches that have that endoscopic in it. So in this case, when you did your research on how a laparoscopic tu tubal ligation is performed, you should have figured out that what they do is they insert a laparoscope through a small incision made in or near the navel. They go through the belly button. So that makes our operative approach percutaneous endoscopic. So we have two row options here. Once again, we could have used that upper row or the middle row and our fork in the road this time was the operative approach. And you can see that that percutaneous endoscopic is on our top row, not our middle row. So that's how we know which lane we need to stay in. It's based on that operative approach because we have the fallopian tube bilateral in both of those rows. So we have percutaneous endoscopic, that gives us the top row. So now we've got zero UL seven for bilateral fallopian tubes, four percutaneous endoscopic. They didn't indicate any devices and no qualifier. So zero UL seven four ZZ. All right, let's move on. I have one final procedure note for us to look at today. We have a patient at 12 weeks gestation, wish to have the pregnancy terminated, and it was for medical reasons. An intrauterine saline injection produced an incomplete abortion. So this procedure was followed by a dilation and curatage. So there's a couple things going on there and I've highlighted some of the key things that you're gonna look out for. So if you need to pause it, go ahead and pause it again and see if you can figure out. I will tell you in this case, we have two different procedures that we're going to be coding. And you're gonna find this to be the case uh, often with obstetrics coding. There's usually more than one thing going on. So you're gonna end up using multiple PCS procedure codes. So pause and look this up in your book. And I'm gonna go ahead and move on to the tables. So our first procedure is going to be that whole um, terminating the pregnancy via an intrauterine saline injection, which produced an incomplete abortion. So the first procedure was abortion using the saline, which is classified as an abortifacient. So that's important for our qualifier. Now we know in this case, our root operation is abortion since they are artificially terminating the pregnancy. That's the definition of abortion in PCS. So you're gonna use that as your main term in the index. So you're gonna go under abortion and then you're gonna go products of conception as your subterm. That will give you the first four characters, one, zero, A, zero. The approach via natural or artificial opening is selected because that is how the incomplete abortion was accomplished. So it's not about how that 
intrauterine injection took place because we're talking about the objective of the procedure. The objective is the abortion to artificially terminate the pregnancy and the termination occurs vaginally. And it was incomplete in this case. So remember they had to go back in and do a DNC. So that's why we use via natural or artificial opening no device. And we also know that we need to be in that bottom row because that's where we find our qualifier, that abortofacient is in there. So we end up with 10A07ZX. So again, sometimes when you have more than one row that you could potentially be coding from, you have you have to uh, make some decision points. So I always like to say you're at a fork in the road. You have to decide, do I go with this row versus that row? All your characters must come from the same row. Stay in your lane. So sometimes you can use your qualifier as a process of elimination. Sometimes it's that operative approach that's your um, determination. Sometimes you're gonna find the device that you're looking for in one row versus the other. So use those clues to help you figure out which of the rows you need to be in. So again, we end up with 10A07ZX as our final code for this portion of the procedure. Now, if you need to pause and come up with your second code, let's look at the case again. So because it was an incomplete abortion, they had to follow it up with a dilation and curatage. So go ahead and work on your second code, pause if you need to, and then rejoin us to look at the table. So the second code was, the second procedure was the dilation and curatage, otherwise known as a DNC for extraction of the retained products of conception. So with a DNC, the cervix is dilated and then they use instrumentation to scrape the uterine lining. They're essentially stripping out the retained products of conception, which is how we arrive at extraction as our root operation. Because look at the definition there of extraction, pulling, or stripping out or off all or a portion of a body part by the use of force. Our body part being products of conception retained. So how do we get here? From the index, you're gonna look up extraction, then products of conception retained. And that provides you with one zero D one. So it will give you the first four characters and then you have to come to the table to finish building your code. In this case, we only have one row to be working from. It's the body part, um, character four, that tells us products of conception retained because it was an incomplete abortion. So some of the products of conception were retained and they had to go in there and get the rest of it out. So we end up with one zero D one seven, for natural or artificial opening, because that's how they get in there. They dilate the cervix and use instrumentation to do that scraping, um, no device and no qualifier. 10D17ZZ. All right, so that's it for today. I hope you found these examples to be helpful. Obstetrics can be a little bit tricky because you're not working just from the obstetrics section. I will give you a little bit of a helpful tip though. Um, for the procedures that are coded to the obstetrics section, a lot of times you'll find it easier to just go right to those tables. If you flip in your code book right now, some of the tables that we've been looking at, you'll see that the obstetrics section is only a couple pages long. And so in a case like that, the coding guidelines allow you to work directly from the tables. You don't have to start in the index if you don't choose to. So you can look up those root operation definitions right there at the top of each one of the tables and you can work directly from the table. That's a good shortcut in a small section such as this. In a large section like the medical and surgical section, nearly impossible. So that's my little helpful tip for you today please make sure that you hit the like button and subscribe to my channel for more content on medical coding with Dr. Teal. Take care and Dr. Teal out.